Welcome back to WUB Network America's sports leader for the third ever presentation of Monster Energy Saturday Afternoon Baseball. As requested by Tim Horton's Cup Series, we'll be doing a Twins game, and it's a rivalry. The Minnesota Twins, who have struggled out of the gates 5-11 and in the first three weeks of the season, battle Carlos Rodon and the Chicago White Sox, who also have struggled 7-10 and from guaranteed right field on this Saturday afternoon. Before we start that, let's just look around at what happened around the majors already today. This being an interesting tar start time, 6 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock local time here on a Saturday between the Twins and the White Sox. We'll be giving you updates from some of the 4 o'clock games which are Indians, Astros, Cardinals, Phillies, and Braves, Pirates. We have a couple games that are done, a couple early games, some 1 o'clock games, the Yankees and the Blue Jays. The Blue Jays got the victory 1-0 over the Yanks from the Rogers Center. Both teams are 509-9. Aaron Sanchez pitched 5 and a third of shutout baseball as the bullpen, Harrell, Grilly, Herndon, and... Roberto Ozuna all came to shut them down in the final stages of the game. Ozuna had been struggling as a closer. Yankees had some issues in the third inning. Luis Severino took a line drive from Melvin Upton, Upton Jr. off of his hand, and he ended up leaving the game with a hand injury. Very unfortunate for him, and... It looks like he may be placed on the disabled list. They're thinking it could be a break. Nationals win their second straight at City Field. Today was Matt Harvey and Max Scherzer. Nationals get the 6-5 victory. Mets jumped all over Max Scherzer in the first with three first-inning runs. Started off by a two-run bomb to dead center at City by Jay Bruce. But then the Nationals started to chip away one run in the second. And because the Mets had three errors in the ballgame, coming from Rene Rivera as Dribble Cabrera and Curtis Granderson, two of which came in the third inning, and Matt Harvey ended up surrendering four unearned runs in that inning. A couple RBI singles from Max Scherzer, Trey Turner. Stephen Drew also drove in a run in that span. Harvey gave up 10 hits in five and two-thirds. Mets did pull close. They did get it to a 5-5 game, but in the seventh inning, Jerry Blevins gave up a solo shot to Stephen Drew to give the Nationals the victory. The Royals and Red Sox from Fenway also in the books. The Royals got to 7-9 on the year, beating the Red Sox 9-8. Matt Stram, the winning pitcher. Another injury, Matt be, uh, pardon me, Andrew Benintendi left the game with some sort of injury to the leg. It looked like possibly a quad or a shin. He left the game after being spiked going to first base. He did get the single, but ended up going down with an injury. Three for four on the day with a double for Benintendi, who has been firing on all cylinders since an 086 start to the season. As over the past eight games, he has six extra base hits, three homers, two doubles, and a triple. The Red Sox jumped all over Danny Duffy. Danny Duffy with his worst start of the year, but he hasn't really had many good ones. Does not have a decision yet this season, however. He allowed ten runs, ten hits, and seven earned in three and a third at Fenway, including a pair of home runs in the span. Stephen Wright wasn't much more consistent. Wright had had three awesome starts to start the year with a 1-0 record, but got knocked around in four and two-thirds, allowing seven hits, six earned. And the Royals ended up getting through to beat the Red Sox 9-8. And two more quick ones. The Marlins beat the Reds 13-3. Wee and Chen got knocked around in the first couple innings for the fourth consecutive start. Don Mattingly said there's a very good chance that he's now going to get taken out of the rotation. Another bad start for him. However, the Reds did not have any more success with four different pitchers giving up at least two earned runs. Rysel Iglesias, Tim Adelman, Nephew Gondo, and the starter Tony Singrani all in that category. Marlins with a pair of bombs coming from Christian Yelich and Miguel Rojas in the victory, getting them to 6-12. and 12. 
A lot of teams who have been struggling out of the gates started early today. Dodgers and Orioles, however, is different. The Dodgers with a 5-2 to two victory. Both teams doing well in this interleague series. Dodgers looked good from the start after Clayton Kershaw got knocked around last night in Camden Yards. Four and a third of shutout baseball from Rich Hill, who still is not allowed to run yet this season. Adam Liberator and Hatcher came out of the bullpen strong. And the big issue, Nathan Adcock, after seven three-hit, one-earned-run innings from Kevin Gosman, it was a 1-1 game. He allowed four runs in the eighth inning, including back-to-back jacks from Peterson and Utley, which was very frustrating. And the Dodgers get to 11-6. and six. So just the games that are going on right now... Right now, it is 5-1. The Astros leading the Indians in the seventh inning. The Cardinals and Lance Lynn jumping all over the Phillies. It's 4-1 in the bottom of the seventh. Bartolo Colon and the Braves on top of the Pirates right now. 4-0 in the seventh. We'll get you some updates from those games as they come to us. But now we have to talk about this game. It's the Twins and the White Sox. Twins 5-11. and 11. White Sox not much more successful there at 7-10. and 10. As today's, yesterday's matchup, it was a rainy day from Guaranteed Rate Field, but they did get the game in and played through the rain. Hector Santiago pitched pretty well for the, for the Twins, allowing just one run over six innings. Kyle Gibson, though, came in and got knocked around. And that allowed the White Sox to keep up with them. But not a great start from Miguel Gonzalez. And Giovanni Soto got knocked around as well on the mound. No home runs in the game, though. Some big hits from Byron Buxton, Max Kepler, and others. Buxton has had a huge start this this season, hitting 308. We'll get to all that when the game gets started. So it is just about time for the start today between the White Sox and the Twins, our third-ever edition of Monster Energy Saturday Afternoon Baseball right here on WUB Network, America's Sports Leader. It's coming to you right now. This is going to be an exciting one today is getting ready on the mound. Jose Barreos and Carlos Rodon, teammates on Team Venezuela during the World Baseball Classic. And they'll be back at it again today as we are just moments away from the start on Monster Energy Saturday afternoon baseball. The Twins and the White Sox from Guaranteed Rate Field. We will be happy to be bringing it to you as we look at just quickly the pitching matchup Today, and how these two pitchers have performed this season, Carlos Rodon, three starts, 1-0 with a 5.40 ERA, gave up four runs, though, in his last outing. Wasn't his best, but did not get the loss as the White Sox did hang on to win that game. Jose Barrios, in two starts, is 0-1 with a 3.38 ERA, has a few strikeouts, has allowed some runs, just one long blast. So it is just about time as we are about to take a look at who is out there today for the Minnesota Twins. Boy, will this be an exciting one. As we look at your starting line of Byron Buxton, the red-hot center fielder leading off, followed by Brian Dozier, Robbie Grossman batting third, Max Kepler cleaning it up, Mikel Sano bats fifth, Jorge Polanco bats sixth, Joe Maurer struggle early going, bats seventh, and Kenny Svargas and John Ryan Murphy catching and bringing up the rear of the batting order. So here is Byron Buxton leading off as we are just about ready to get going right here on WUB Network, America's sports leader. Carlos Rodon looks in for the sign from the second-year catcher, Omar Narvez. He fires first pitch. Buxton fans and misses at a fastball on the outside, and we're underway from guaranteed right field, formerly U.S. Cellular Field, new name this season, hoping to spark some new excitement here in Chicago on the opposite side. 
one Buxton crushes the 0-1 pitch. Deep left field, going back near the wall. Oh, and what a catch! Oh, man! Avesel Garcia just stole a home run back. Santa Maria, Avesel Garcia. What a catch by Garcia. He just robbed Byron Buxton of a left field bomb. Holy moly. Avesel Garcia just reached over the wall, and we are quickly underway here with an incredible play. Wow, that was absolutely incredible. Avesel Garcia, not only was this a nice catch, he ran amazingly far to get to this ball. Banged his head on the yellow padding to signify a home run, but made the beautiful home run robbery catch, and that's the first out. Now that Garcia has established himself, let's look at who the White Sox and Robin Ventura have out there defensively. So Armar Narvez, as we said, is catching, pitching is Carlos Rodon. Infield left to right, Todd Frazier at third. Everett Cabrera at short, Tim Anderson at second, Jose Abreu at first. Outfield left to right, Avesel Garcia, Charlie Tilson the youngster, and Peter Borges with Melky Cabrera as the DH. And now here's Brian Dozier, has struck out 12 times in his last 10 games, coming off of the game with 1 for 5 with an RBI single last night against the White Sox. Just a 232 start for the man who hit 41 home runs last year. Just has one long bomb, but he can change that with one swing of the bat against a guy who gives up home runs pretty regularly. First pitch, Dozier fouls it off. 0-1 oh, the count. 0-1, oh, here we go. Dozier fans and misses at the slider at the bottom part of the zone. Nice movement on that pitch from Rodon. 0-2 oh, the count. Rodon trying to put him away. 0-2, oh, the sign from Narvez. He deals. Swing and a miss on the circle change. Dozier goes down, fishing on three pitches. Nice pitching there from Carlos Rodon to rack up his first K of the day. And there's two outs now in the top of the first with Robbie Grossman ready to come up and have his turn at the plate. Had a pair of doubles last night in the Minnesota victory and overall hitting 317 on the season. Great start for the former Houston Astro. First pitch is lined into center field. Tilson going back near the warning track and he'll make the catch. Six pitches in an easy, easy, simple first inning for Carlos Rodon. Just the one mistake, and Avicel Garcia saved him with a home run robbing catch. White Sox will come to the plate next, here on Monster Energy Saturday Afternoon Baseball on WUB Network, America's sports leader. So Jose Barreos, it's been just about a year, a calendar year since his MLB debut, and boy has he become a star, as he'll be facing Nelky, Everett Cabrera, and Jose Abreu in this high home run hitting lineup. Barreos looks in for the sign from John Ryan Murphy, who's getting a lot of time now behind the plate. The former Yankee first pitch to Melky Cabrera is lined into left, and coming in to shallow left is Byron Buxton to make the nice catch, and that is the first out. As we look at who the men from the south side have out there, Melky Cabrera, Everett Cabrera, then it's Jose Abreu, Todd Frazier, the Todd father, cleaning up, Charlie Tilson batting fifth, Avesel Garcia batting sixth, Tim Anderson, Peter Borges, and Omar Narvez round out the Chicago order. Chicago in their black uniforms, twins in gray. Defense, Murphy the catcher, Barreas the pitcher, Sano at third, Polanco at short, Dozier at second, and at first today it is Kenny Svargas. Outfield left to right, Byron Buxton, Max Kepler, and Robbie Grossman, a bunch of youngsters. And now here is Everett Cabrera who has been getting on, a ba on base a lot recently and has also been racking up the stolen bases, having three experiences as the thief in the last four games, takes the first pitch, a two-seamer, high, ball one. The sign, the 1-0 offering, 
Cabrera taking the fastball down the middle at 92 from Barrios all the way. Barrios, not a power pitcher, does not get much more than about 94 on the velocity on his fastballs. One and one, here it comes. Cabrera fouls off the fastball, nearly timed that one and two. Having a low velocity, though, does make it more prone to giving up hits, not blowing people away, and he does not have big movement on his fastball, which is why he utilizes other pitchers and other pitches a majority of the time. 1-2 pitch. Cabrera shoots the two-seamer down the left field line for possibly extra bases. Cabrera easily into second. That is a one-out double. It was the, They were shifted to the right with Cabrera batting lefty, and he nails it down the left field line. Sino nowhere near getting to that ball. This is why the shift doesn't always pay off as that left that left field, the third base line, so easy to get a ball pass. Not hit incredibly hard, but Cabrera legs it out for extra bases, and the former Padres shortstop batting 362 in the early going in his first season with the White Sox, and now we'll see what he does on the base paths, being a former stolen base champ in the National League. He was with the Padres in 2012. And now that'll bring up Jose Abreu. Trying to do something here with one out and a runner on second. Abreu in his fourth season now with the White Sox coming from Cuba. Has four homers this season. Drove in two on a double yesterday. One for five. First pitch from Barreos to Abreu. Shoots one foul towards the twin dugout. Hits the railing. No trouble there. 0-1. Abreu drives one. This is in the right center field gap. That's going to roll all the way to the wall. Cabrera comes around to score. Abreu gets in with stand-up double. Back-to-back -back doubles. Off. Jose Barreos. And it's 1-0 White Sox in the bottom of the first. And the fans here at Guaranteed Rate Field are excited to see the White Sox jumping on top early. Nice base running there by Everett Cabrera. And also Jose Abreu, which, who is not the most fleet-footed guy, able to get in there and hustle his way in for a stand-up double. So back-to-back -back doubles, and now Barreos needs to get back under control, but things don't get any easier because the Todd father now bats. <laughs> and John Ryan Murphy is going to come out to, to the pitcher's mound to talk to him with Cabrera, with Frazier coming up, a man who has hit a pair of homers in the last three games, but did not look himself yesterday, going 0 for 5 with a trifecta of strikeouts. Murphy goes back, no pitching coach, and no manager coming out to talk. So, we'll get back going right here. The sign for Murphy, eighth pitch of the inning for Barreos, who is a bit, has a bit of a sidearm motion, fastball misses low. That makes him deceiving as well. He has a bit of a sidearm motion. It's like a half sidearm. 1-0, swing and a miss, strike one. You, couldn't, you won't call him a submarine starter, but he is a sub-submarine starter. He kind of has that look. 1-1, one, one, misses outside, fastball 2-1 to Todd Frazier. Todd Frazier just as successful with the White Sox as he was in all his time with Cincinnati in terms of home run hitting. 2-1 misses high, and now he's behind on Todd. 3-1. Look for him to get the green light. With Charlie Tilson due up next, followed by the home run robber, Avicel Garcia. 3-1. Frazier does drive one to center, but coming in, Kepler drops the ball. And now coming around to score will be Jose Abreu. Throw to the plate not nearly in time. And... Frazier into first base. What the heck was that? Max Kepler just couldn't come up with the ball. This was an easy fly ball he was coming in on. Hit off the heel of his glove. And I, I feel like this is like something a little leaguer would do. He did not squeeze the glove. It was in his glove. And it just fell right out. And then it ended up tripling behind, trickling behind him. He did make a nice throw to the plate, though. Abreu did not get there by much. This ball almost clipped Barreos, too, as it came through. As he threw it to the plate. I don't know why Barreos didn't move. So all kinds of issues here for Minnesota. We know Tim Horton's Cup Series wanted to see some Twins 
baseball, but it is not looking good in the early going. After getting the easy out to Melky Cabrera in the f to get to start this off, Everett Cabrera with a double down the left field line. Jose Abreu with a double, an RBI double into the right center field corner. And Todd Frazier with a fly ball to center dropped by Max Kepler to drive in the run. And the White Sox lead 2-0. And now Charlie Tilson, who was 0-5 last night, faces Barreo's first pitch. Murphy sets up outside. He hits that spot on the slider. 1-0 the count. <clears throat> Barreo's looking not his best out there. Doesn't look the same as he did last season when he first came up, which makes us wonder if he was rushed. 1-0 fastball in there, strike one. We know the Mets did that with Michael Conforto. Some also consider that about Christian Yelich, that he was just rushed to the majors. 1-1 is in there, strike two. People also starting to say that about Jamison Tyon of the Pirates. He has really not been himself like what he was when he first came up. 1-2, Tilson lines one up the middle. That's a base hit into center. Kepler picks it up cleanly. Frazier into second, and the cycle continues. Oh, man. This is not good. As now that'll bring up Abbasil Guy Garcia, who's already had a lot of action in this game with that big home run robbery of Byron Buxton on the second pitch of the game that was lined to left. Against the wall, he brought back that homer. Though, issues for Garcia. In his last six games, he struck out 15 times. Garcia, this is why he was not always an everyday player. As he has already been K'd 23 times this season. Which I believe is more than anybody else in this lineup. Just 16 for Todd Frazier, 11 for Jose Abreu, 11 for Melky Cabrera, 6 for Tim Anderson. Yeah, he's the one with the highest, and he doesn't play every day. So first pitch to Garcia, misses low, smothered in the dirt by Murphy on the fastball, 1-0. The Twins, looks like they are already thinking about getting some action going in the bullpen. 1-0. Misses low and inside, 2-0. and oh. The one issue for both these teams, both these teams had to use a lot of their pen last night. So the Twins really don't have too much available. The main person they have that's definitely available is Adalberto Mejia, a lefty. But they have used him as a starter this season and it wasn't as successful. He's been slightly better out of the pen, but he has surrendered 10 runs. They also have Buddy Boshers, and then the back end of the bullpen is just fine. So they do have action. Now it looks like Adalberto Mejia is warming up here in the first. 2-0 misses inside, and now he's behind 3-0 on Avicel Garcia. One bad pitch, and he'll load the bases up for Tim Anderson. So all kinds of issues here in this first inning for Boreas. 3-0, pitch number 20 of the inning. Swing and a miss at ball four. That was a two-seaber of the dirt, but Garcia went after it. Maybe... Proving my point about him and his 23 strikeouts in the first three weeks of the year. Three and one to Garcia. Inside of the legs, ball four. And that'll load the bases as Frazier and Tilson move over. So the bases are juiced. Frazier at third. Tilson at second. Avicel Garcia at first. And here comes the pitching coach to have a conversation with Barreos. It's been an absolutely terrible inning for Jose. Just one earned because the second run scored on that error by Max Kepler. And Kepler's probably feeling terrible right now because that's what this inning has come to. Barreos now has ERA up to 4.09, an ERA that was below 4 prior to the start. Carlos Rodon must be enjoying this. Only had to throw six pitches in the first and now getting a big rest. He's a guy who, if he has a lot in the tank, he can go far. He did have three complete games last season, which was... Fourth in the American League, behind the likings of only Felix Hernandez, Dallas Keuchel, and David Price. Tim Anderson batting now, 246 average for the second baseman and shortstop, playing second base today as Everett Cabrera getting squeezed into the lineup. First pitch popped up. Infield fly rule. Runners can advance at their own risk. Nobody will risk it. Caught by Dozier, second out. So finally... 
the second out of the inning. As we look at the Twins' upcoming schedule, Monday and Tuesday, they play a pair at home against Miami. They'll face Edison Volquez against Trevor May as the first matchup. Then they'll be hosting the Rangers for four after an off day Wednesday. That's Jose Barrios' next test is scheduled to be Friday against Cole Hamels, so it doesn't get any easier. And he has to deal with that Rangers lineup that includes Beltre, Rugnet Odor, Jonathan Lucroy, and Mike Napoli. Bases loaded, two outs. The eight-hitter, uh, Peter Borges, batting here. Borges has bounced around the majors ever since the Angels realized he was not Trout or Trumbo or Cole Calhoun, and they decided to make him one of the ones they got rid of. And the many outfield prospects they had, they, he's played for the Phillies, the Cardinals, the Royals. Now he's found his way here to Chicago. Bases loaded, two outs, already two home here in the bottom of the first. Twins have Kepler, Sano, and Jorge Polanco do up in the top half of the second. First pitch here. Misses low, outside, 1-0 the count on the fastball. Cardinals got a two-run home run from Johnny Peralta. They now lead 6-1 over the Phillies as that game heads to the bottom of the 8th from Citizens Bank Park. 1-0, here it comes to Borges. He takes one in there on the outside part of the zone on a two-seamer, 1-1. One one. Barreo struggling, he's about to throw pitch number 25 of the first inning, which is why Adalberto Mejia is already up trying to get ready. 1-1. One, one. Borges grounds one down the left field line, just foul. <clears throat> one two pitch. Here it comes. Low. Outside ball two. Jim Tum is the third base umpire today. Mike Lessened is the home plate umpire. 2-2 two, two to Borges. He lines one to left. That will be caught by Buxton. Buxton makes a sliding catch in left. Anything Garcia can do, I guess he can do better. White Sox leave him loaded. But they do get back-to-back -back doubles from Cabrera and Abreu. And then Todd Frazier drives in the second run on an error by Max Kepler. 2-0 the White Sox lead as we head to the second here on WUB Network's presentation of Monster Energy Saturday Afternoon Baseball. Tomorrow, don't miss the NASCAR Progressive Cup Series. Yes, it's time once again for Phoenix International's Raceway on NASCAR Goes West. After Kyle Busch won the fuel mileage game last week at Vegas to defeat Kyle Larson, he looks to continue his success at Phoenix International Raceway in the desert. Kevin Harvick, Denny Hamlin, Ryan Newman, all strong there. Other guys like Johnson, Logano, Elliott, and Junior will be chasing for the victory. The Camping World 500, tomorrow at 2 Eastern, right here on WUB Network. So just six pitches necessary in that first inning of work for Carlos Rodon. Now he looks to continue the success and build on his pitching performance. Now that he has a lead, facing Max Kepler first. First pitch of the at-bat is a fastball right down Pater, but taken all the way by Kepler. Owen won the count. <laughs> That Astros-Indian game has now been tied at five, a couple home runs, and now that game will be heading to extras. Phillies and Cardinals just about over. It's the top of the ninth, 6-1 to one the score. The other game we had been taking a close eye on is currently in a rain delay. That is the Braves and the Pirates in a 4-3 Brave lead. 0-1, Kepler takes another fastball. 0-2 the count, and we'll see if he bites here. Kepler, Sano, and the shortstop Jorge Polanco, a lot of these big pot prospects up in this inning. 0-2 fan, and a miss by Max Kepler with a fastball in the dirt. Down he goes, and that's the first out of this second inning. Kepler looks bad there as Rodon strikes out his second. Still has only fired off nine from the mound with one out in the second. And here's Mikel Sano, not a great start to the year, just hitting 224. <clears throat> Rodon's first pitch is blasted by Sano deep to left center. Take a good look. Say goodbye to that ball. Mikel Sano goes deep. 
What do you know? It's Mikel Sano, second bomb of the year, and the Twins are on the board. It's 2-1 to one here in the second inning. What a shot from Mikel Sano. What do you know? It's Mikel Sano going deep, and just like that, the Twins are on the board, and that lead by the White Sox held at home it has been cut in half by Mikel Sano, and now Jorge Polanco will look to tie this game. So Radon looks to get back in a groove as Omar Narvez with the sign. First pitch to the shortstop Jorge Polanco is in there at the bottom part of the strike zone on a circle change, strike one. I might jinx it, I have a feeling I will, but Rodon has not thrown a ball yet, 11 strikes. 0-1, Narvez with the sign. Swing and a miss. Polanco fans with a slider at 80. One of the more deceiving pitches in Rodon's repertoire, 0-2. Polanco just hit 105 in the early goings, one of the many reasons the Twins have gotten off to such a slow start. 0-2, the pitch to Jorge Polanco. He pops one up, shallow center, coming in, and it's going to fall in in front of Charlie Tilson. A couple bad plays by the, the left fielders have been making spectacular plays. Center fielders, horrible plays. Tilson was not hustling, and it falls about 10 feet in front of him. He could have dove and made an easy catch there. I don't know what he was thinking. But a single for Jorge Polanco, now a 121 batting average for Jorge, who's... 7 for 58 now, with a triple and 4 RBI. So a one-out base runner, back-to-back -back hits for the Twins, and that will bring up Joe Maurer hitting 281. Not as strong as he has been in the past. As we look at the White Sox upcoming schedule, they'll be hosting the Indians here, guaranteed, right next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. James Shields pitching in that game. He struck out 10 in his last one. This homestand wraps up with four at home against the Tampa Bay Rays. That's Rodon's next start. It's scheduled on Thursday against Brad Snell, a fellow left-handed hardballer. So here's Maurer, who was one for, one for four with a walk, a strikeout, and a pair of runs last night. First pitch is grounded foul off to the left. Owen won the count. <clears throat> 0-1, oh, the pitch is outside ball one. First ball of the day for Rodon. He had thrown 14 strikes prior to that. Polanco has speed on first. you got to keep a sharp eye on him. Hasn't had any real opportunities to steal a base yet this season. Watch for him to take that opportunity here. 1-1, one, one. curveball in the dirt, 2-1. <laughs> Rodon ahead. Rodon behind on Maurer. After Maurer, it is... Kenny Svargas, the 8-hitter, 2-1. Mauer lines one to right center. That's going to fall in front of Peter Borges. Going to second is Polanco. He did not get a good jump. And now the Twins have life. Three straight hits off of Carlos Rodon. And now first and second with one out here in the second. Kenny Svargas, the batter. <laughs> Bit of a surprise. Struggles here on the mound for both Barrios and Carlos Rodon. And now that's Kenny Vargas, who has one homer this season, batting 194. He has a 310 OBP, a bunch of walks on the year. First pitch. Narvez gets it in there, strike one. He is one of the best catchers now in the league. Not a great hitter, but defensively, he's probably one of the best. He can throw out base runners. He can control a pitching staff. 0-1. In there, strike two. When he was coming up, many compared him to Yadier Molina in his ability behind the plate. And I think that was a realistic comparison. Quickly ahead 0-2, and Vargas lines one into left. That will fall in front of Garcia, base hit. Polanco stops at third. Back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back singles. Back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back hits after the homer by Sano. And now the bases are juiced with one out. And Carlos Rodon starting to have some struggling, but it is John Ryan Murphy coming to the plate. And Murphy is 0 for 8 so far this season, the backup catcher. Not a good sign for Rodon, though, if he's having these types of issues. Because we knew last time he had some control issues in his last start, spotting pitches, but he did still survive to get the victory. <laughs> it's a cloudy, windy day from the from 
guaranteed rate field, and the balls are blowing out much like yesterday, so watch for some more home runs. We already had nearly one earlier, and then we did get one. Bases juiced for John Ryan Murphy. Both teams have loaded the bases. First pitch, that nasty circle change on the outside part of the plate, swung and missed at by the former Yankee catcher Owen 1. 0 1 pitch. Narvez sets up inside, a little too far inside from Rodon's pitch there. 1 and 1. Everyone staying pretty tight to their respective bases. 1 1 is low, 2 and 1. With Polanco's speed down at third, I'd think about possibly, I don't know if they'd risk it, uh, maybe putting down a bunt and trying maybe a suicide squeeze. With one out, I'd think about it with Polanco's speed just to try to tie this game and give Barreos a little confidence. 2-1. Swing and a miss, strike two. The one thing that this inning is doing is giving Barreos some rest because Barreos did have to throw 27 in that last inning. And now Rodon getting worked up near 20 pitches this inning after throwing six in the first. This will be number 19 in the second. Two and two. Bases loaded, one out. Murphy lines went up the middle, past the diving Tim Anderson, that's a base hit. Polanco scores, it's just the cycle as nobody moves any further. Maurer stops at third, a man who pretty much lacks all the speed he had earlier in his career. Four straight singles off of Carlos Rodon, five consecutive hits in total after striking out Max Kepler on three pitches, and this game is tied at two and Byron Buxton will be coming up. Wow, our first two Monster Energy Saturday afternoon baseball games were low scoring. We've had other baseball presentations on here, but MS, MESAB, it's been one nothing both times with a no-hitter by Matt Latos, who, by the way, now has an ERA up near 7 because he's had two consecutive terrible starts since then. That was that one nothing game. And then last week, the Giants and Cubs was a one nothing battle as well with that Bumgarner-Lester pitching duel. So bases loaded, one out, already two home in this inning, and now the White Sox have to start warming somebody up. And their bullpen has not been very trustworthy so far this season. Carson Fulmer, the youngster, has had a horrible start to the year. Matt Perk has not been his best. Really, the only trustworthy men they've had so far in that pen this year are Dan Jennings, and then the back end with Nate Jones and David Robertson. And Dan Jennings is the one who's up right now. So both teams getting guys to start warming up early. First pitch here to Buxton with the bases loaded. Still one out. First pitch is in there. Nice movement on the fastball. Looked outside. He kind of backdoored the pitch and got it into the strike zone 0-1. Buxton had a home run robbed from in earlier in the game. I mean, he'd still like that same result again this time because he'd still end up driving in a run with it all the way back there. Three, the three slowest guys, though, on the team are on base right now. Mauer at third, Kenny's Vargas, the big second baseman at second, and the catcher John Ryan Murphy at first. Oh, one the pitch. That one misses low at the feet of uh, Buxton on the circle change. One and one the count. 2-2, two to two, top of the second inning. Already almost 40 minutes into this broadcast, only the second inning. 1-1 one, one misses low from Rodon, 2-1. And, and Rodon is now fired off 22 pitches this inning. 2-1, and one, Rodon to Buxton. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. Nice movement on the slider. Count is even, 2-2. Two and two. After Buxton, will be back to the two-man in the order, Brian Dozier. As the Twins getting close to batting around here in the second. Two and two the pitch. Buxton takes one low, full count. And now he's got to make a decision with one out, full count. Don't know what kind of pitch Rondon will throw. He'll probably throw something in the strike zone to try to avoid the bases loaded walk. But that can be dangerous with Buxton, a free swinger who can tag balls for home runs and triples. We'll see what happens here. Narv has the sign. The 3-2 offering. Bases loaded, one out. Fouled off by Buxton. We'll see if the runners are going. One out. Tie game. 3-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Down goes Buxton. Rodon gets a huge strikeout right there, and that's the second out of the inning. Now three Ks for Carlos Rodon on the day, and Buxton fails in big spots twice today. Nearly got that home run, but it was stolen from him by Avisel Garcia. 
earlier in the game and now strikes out with the bases loaded and out two away and it'll be Brian Dozier coming to the plate. Before Dozier's plate appearance, let's pause for station identification. WUB Network, home to the NASCAR Progressive Cup Series, MLB, NBA, Sportspeak, and more. America's sports leader. Subscribe. So it's been a wild inning and a half so far, and a big strikeout was just manufactured by Carlos Rodon, but he has allowed five hits this inning. It all started off with a strikeout to Max Kepler, then a home run by Mikel Sano, then four singles in a row of forced in a second run to tie this game at two. Byron Buxton just went down on strikes with a full count and the bases loaded. Bases are still juiced with two outs for Brian Dozier, who struck out his first time on three pitches. Rodon's first pitch here to Dozier misses low in the dirt, 1-0 the count on the circle change. Already 27 pitches thrown by Rodon this inning, getting Barry, Jose Barreos a lot of rest after he had a rocky first. 1-0 to Dozier, paints the outside part of the zone on a fastball, 1-1 one one the count. <laughs> Rodon looks in for the sign from Narvez. The 1-1, one, one, he deals. This one is ripped down the left field line. Chest foul, says Jim Tum Payne. That was a little controversial right there. Very close. 1-2, and two. can he get the strikeout? Swing and a miss, he got him. So Rodon does strike out the side. However, it's a bit of a rocky inning as he allows two runs on five hits. But the Twins do lead, leave the bases jacked. We head to the bottom of the second, tied to two on Monster Energy Saturday Afternoon Baseball, right here on WUB Network. <clears throat> Welcome back to Guaranteed Right Field. The White Sox have become the Chicago team that's been forgotten about after the Cubs made it to the NLCS two seasons ago and then last year. Got their World Series title. Now the White Sox trying to become talked about once again. They've got Omar Narvez. Then back to the top of the order with Melky and Everett here in the bottom of the second. Barreos fired off 27 from the mound in the first inning. His first pitch of the second is a fastball at 91. That misses outside. 1-0 the count. Narvez, as we said, a great defensive catcher. Great arms. Just not a great hitter. 1-0 misses low, 2-0, just a 2-13 average so far this season. That's the exact average he finished with in 2016, which is pretty ironic. 2-0, Barreos is behind. He doesn't want to have another rocky inning as Narvez fouls off the 2-0 on the hands off into the bleachers in left field. 2-1 the count. <laughs> Boreo's trying to even up the count. Can he do it with this pitch? 2-1, misses low. Bouncing to the plate is that two-seamer. Murphy getting a lot of work behind the plate. John Ryan Murphy having some issues back there trying to control Jose Boreo's. 3-1 the pitch. Misses outside. Ball four. Narvez draws the leadoff walk. So just when we thought maybe Boreo's could get into a groove, now this team has tied the game back up. I stand corrected. Adalberto Mejia is still currently warming up in the Minnesota bullpen. White Sox pen at the moment is also active as Dan Jennings continues to throw. As Narvez draws the walk, not a speedy base runner, but now back to the dangerous top of the order, starting with Everett, pardon me, Melky Cabrera. The two Cabreras, Melky and Everett now. Melky batting 329, not really an outfielder anymore, age 32. The former Yankee, giant, royal, brave, and now White Sox, who had his best years probably with the Yankees back in the days, is batting here for the second time. In his first plate appearance, he flew out back in the first inning. So, Melky getting ready, one out. No, nobody out. One on. The one on is someone with little speed, Omar Narvez. Melky, 329, one homer, five ribbies, and a pair of stolen bases so far for the DH. Probably the only case in the league this year where the DH is the leadoff hitter. First pitch misses low and inside, 1-0. and oh. But the credit to Melky sustaining his speed throughout the season is not having to play the outfield that much. And with defensive outfielders like Avisel Garcia and Charlie Tilson, White Sox have that option. 1-0 is a fastball that misses low and inside. Now Barreo's behind 2-0. 
awful start for both these pitchers today. Bottom of the second. 2-0. Melky lines one up the middle. Caught by Dozier. Throws back to first. Narva is back in time. But that's the first out. And Melky is now have an 0 for 2 to his credit today. Don't miss tomorrow. On TBS. It's TBS's Sunday afternoon baseball. The Dodgers are at the Orioles. Pardon me. ESPN Sunday night baseball. 8 o'clock. As Adrian Gonzalez battles Adam Jones and the Orioles on ESPN. So here's Everett Cabrera who doubled and scored. Started the big, big rally for the White Sox back in the first inning. And the first pitch from Barrios misses low and inside 1-0. and up. Both these teams have loaded the bases in this one at some stage in the action. 1-0. Cabrera takes a fastball all the way on the outside part of the corner. 1-1 one one the count. <clears throat> Decent lead off first for Narvez. 1-1. One, one, breaks in the dirt and bounces to the plate again in the fastball. 2-1. John Ryan Murphy and Narvez are getting so much work in the, behind the plate. I mean, with all these pitches in the dirt. 2-1. Dropping down a bunt is Everett Cabrera. That was pretty nice. Everett just barely thrown out at first. A drag bunt. By Everett Cabrera, he nearly got it to work. He almost beat that out. That does advance Narvez to second, but there are two away. But on the other hand, Jose Abreu, who is Everett Cabrera's counterpart in the extra base hitting column so far in the early goings of this one, bats. Abreu drove in Everett Cabrera with a double to the right center field gap in the first inning. And now the fourth-year man looks to continue his success. First pitch misses low, ball one on the fastball. <clears throat> Narvez at second, two away. 1-0, misses low, 2-0. Barreos now at 41 pitches here in the second. Really not a number you want to see, especially since the Twins used up a lot of bullpen men yesterday. Kyle Gibson getting knocked around after Hector Santiago pitched so well. 2-0 offering. Misses low, 3-0. Tomorrow's pitching matchup, it is going to be Irvin Santana taking to the hill for the Twins against Lucas Giolito. That'll be a 2-15 start. We'll see if Abreu gets the green light. Ahead, 3-0 in the count. A sign from Murphy, 3-0 offering. This is high. Good eye by Abreu. And he draws the four-pitch walk. Second walk of the inning. Third of the day. Issued by Jose Barreos, and there's two on and two out for the Todd Father. I mean, there are two outs, but Todd Frazier is a great two out hitter, a great hitter with runners in scoring position, was in the top five in the AL last season in the average with RISP. <laughs> and Todd, just a 254 average so far this season, reached on that error by Max Kepler back in the first. Has three bombs, ten ribbies to his credit. First pitch misses high ball one. That's five in a row that have missed pretty badly from Barreos, who is at 44 pitches right now. And he only has 20 strikes, 24 balls. Been pretty ugly in the early goings of this outing. 1-0 to Frazier. That's a nice one, painting the top inside part of the strike zone in on the hands on Frazier, but he does get the call. One and one the count. From Mike Renslow, the home plate umpire. One one is outside. Ball two, Frazier. Looking good. Narvez at second. Abreu at first. Not much speed. Couple walks surrendered by Barreos in this bottom of the second. Two one is cracked to center field. Going back is Kepler. Back a little before the warning track. He makes the catch and that retires the side. So a couple walks issued by Barreos, but no more damage done. He pitches a scoreless bottom of the second. We head to the third here on Monster Energy Saturday Afternoon Baseball. We're tied at two right here on WUB Network, America's sports leader. <laughs> We're not quite sure where next week's MESAB will be from. We'll probably have a video coming up soon 
that will let you vote on one of two games. There's not really big any big standout matchups next week. First pitch from Rodon is outside ball one. He threw 30 pitches in the second after throwing just six in the first, and he faces the heart of the twin order with Robbie Grossman, Max Kepler, and Mikel Sano. 1-0 to Robbie. He grounds one sh sharp down to short. Easy play for Cabrera as he throws it down to first, and that's the first out of this top of the third inning. Rodon has allowed the five hits. As we look at the Twins' early season ranks in the American League, they are fourth in stolen bases, sixth in walks, but with average and runners with runners in scoring position are 14th, only ahead of the struggling Texas Rangers, which is a bit of a shocker with how strong that team usually is. They are hitting absolutely terribly with runners in scoring position. Here's Max Kepler, struck out his first time back in the second. And he's going to drill the first pitch he sees to shallow center. Coming in and making the play look easy is Charlie Tilson, the rookie, the rookie of the year eligible center fielder who has a great average hitting 302, and he'll be due up to start the bottom of the third. Quickly two outs for Rodon on just three pitches, working quickly like he did in the first. So six in the first. 30 in the second in terms of pitches, and 30's only thrown three. Now here's Mikel Sano, who went deep his first time, looking to give the Twins an advantage. Looking in for the sign from Narvez. First pitch from Rodon. Sano swings and misses at the fastball at just 90 miles an hour. Not his best fastball, a little outside, but Sano looking for his second bomb of the day. Swung hard at that one. <clears throat> oh, one comes. Here it is. Sino rips one into the seats behind the third base dugout a little further out. 0 oh, 2 the count. Rodon looks in for the side. 0 oh, 2 pitch. Sino rips another one foul and he stays alive. After Sino, it's to Jorge Polanco who started. The span of four consecutive singles in that last inning before back-to-back -back Ks were racked up by Rodon. Looking for his fourth strikeout of the day. 0-2, the pitch. Good eye by Sano. He takes that one low and outside at the knees. 1-2, the count. The sign, the windup, the 1-2 pitch. Sano fouls another one off. He's fighting hard here against Carlos Rodon. He has a bomb to his credit today, trying to do something again. 1-2. Sano rips one down to third. Corralled by Frazier, who throws down to first and got him, and that retires the side. So, 1-2-3 inning worked by Rodon. Both pitchers get into grooves after they surrendered some runs. We head to the bottom of the third. Still deadlocked at two here on Monster Energy Saturday Afternoon Baseball on WUB Network. Charlie Tilson leads off here in the bottom half of the third against Boreos. Tilson, Avisel Garcia, and Tim Anderson do up. Tilson singled back in the bottom of the first inning, and that whole crazy span of excitement. Both of these teams have had the bases loaded in one out and have failed to convert, showing why they're both 12th and 14th respectively in average with runners in scoring position. First pitch to Charlie Tilson is ripped into right center, and that's going to roll into the gap. Watch him run. He might try for a triple. Rolling around near the wall, he's rounding second. He's heading for third. The throw from Dozier is not in time and kicked around by Michael Sano, and it's a leadoff triple for Charlie Tilson. If you're thinking about Rookie of the Year earlier, the early in the year, can't look away from Charlie Tilson. Center fielder, a left-handed hitter, a lot of speed, decent amount of power, and he rips that one into the gap and hustles for a three-bagger, and the White Sox have a runner at third and nobody out with Avisel Garcia coming to the plate. What a job right there by Charlie Tilson, hustling around the bases to get there. So now Barrios has to pitch from the stretch again, as the White Sox now have had seven base runners. Pardon me, eight base runners against him. The Twins 
have had a total of five against Carlos Rodon, and they all came five in a row. Rodon just had like some massive lapse of pitching prowess for five batters and was back in the groove. Garcia drew a walk his first time. Also made that spectacular home run robbing catch against Byron Buxton early in the game. And Garcia now rips one into left, shallow, and it's caught by Buxton, and that'll keep Tilson at third, and that's the first out. So we look at the AL Central standings. The Indians are 12 and 6 are on top. Tigers, Royals, 9 and 7, 7 and 9. White Sox are at 7 and 10, a half game behind the Royals, four and a half back overall. 5 and 12 are the Twins, and they are six games back. No, pardon me, 5 and 11, a mistake right there. 5 and 11 for the Twins. They are far back, six games behind the streaking Cleveland Indians. Tim Anderson flew out his first time. And one out runner on third. He'd love to drive in that run and give the White Sox the advantage. 50th pitch of the day for Barrios. Misses low, and he still has more balls than strikes. 26 balls to 24 in the, in the box. And that's 50 pitches into the game. Not a small sample size by any means. 1-0 the pitch. Murphy sets up low. This one dribbled. Hits Barrios' foot. Tilson wasn't going. They do get the out at first. Big mistake by Tilson, and now they're going to have to check to make sure that the big pitching prospect's okay. I mean, this was not hard hit. It, it was a chopper right off just in front of home plate. This was an extremely low pitch in the first place, and it was chopped hard. And it got him on the heel. I think his cleat absorbed most of it because Barreos was able to hustle over and he did throw out Anderson, and as we watch, I mean, this is a radio broadcast, so you can't see what's really going on, but Charlie Tilson had no idea what to do on this play. You could see him dancing around, because he didn't, he started to come home, he hesitated, and then he decided to dive back. So a big mistake there. As we look at the White Sox early season ranks, they are in the top five in a bunch of categories. Fifth in doubles with 35, fifth in triples with five, and they also lead the majors with 23 stolen bases. Most of those coming from Melky Cabrera, Everett Cabrera, and Charlie Tilson with Everett. As we talked about having a big year on the base paths, as he has come up with six stolen bases, one for, uh, what do you call it, Melky Cabrera. Charlie Tilson has stolen four. Avicel Garcia's stolen five. That's where most of them have come from. Here's Peter Borges. He's got one to his credit. He flew out his first time. They had a leadoff triple, but now they need to hit two outs. First pitch in there, strike one. Barreos would be really happy if he pitches out of this mess. A leadoff triple by Charlie Tilson. But he's been able to work through it so far, getting Garcia to fly out to shallow left and Tim Anderson to ground one back at him, but Tilson wasn't able to come home. 0-1, oh the pitch to Borges. Barreo sets, he grounds one down to first, Varghese fields, fires to Barreos, who beats the fast Anderson to first. No, pardon me, Borges, and that retires the side. So a leadoff triple, but Tilson's stranded. That's very rare to see a leadoff triple not come home. After three, we're tied at two. We'll be back. Remember, we've got more NBA playoff action coming up here in WUB Network. Lots of excitement, lots of exciting games. Remember to check it out. We're going to have every game seven, and also every game of the NBA Finals, and at least two from every round of the playoffs. So it'll be Polanco, Maurer, and Kenny's Vargas batting. We have some updates. The Phillies have lost to the Cardinals 6-1. to A nice pitching performance from Lance Lynn defeating Vincent Velasquez. And in other games, Braves and Pirates, that rain delay is over. It's now 5-3. to The... Braves holding the advantage over the Pirates. A home run from Freddie Freeman, his sixth of the year. 
Bartolo Colon having a solid day at the plate. Daniel Hudson not as fortunate. And the Indians and Astros, a walk-off hit for George Springer to drive in the game-winning Yuli Gurriel. It's 6-5 in 10. Cody Allen suffers the loss. And now we have an update. The Braves and Pirates has gone to another rain delay. They came back to play a an inning. They played from the top of the 5th to the top of the 6th, and now they're back in another rain delay. So we're not really going to be focusing on that game, as that one looks like could be done. So Polanco, Maurer, and Vargas up here against Rodon, who's thrown 45 through 3, got black into the groove with three easy Ball's put into play for easy outs in the third, and the first pitch is popped foul by Jorge Polanco, 0-1. <laughs> Rodon comes sets, 0-1 pitch. Rodon rips a curveball foul, 0-2. The sign from Narvez. Rodon agrees. The windup, 0-2 pitch. Polanco takes that one all the way outside low, fastball 1-2. That one down in the 80s at 89, Rodon, but one issue he's always had, if he's not on his game, his velocity just completely disappears as it goes on. Some days when he's in his groove, that doesn't happen. 1-2, Polanco fouls that one off. <clears throat> Rodon comes set, 1-2, Polanco blown away. Nice looking fastball right there. On the 50th pitch of the day for Carlos Rodon. As we look, that is another strikeout. Rodon's racked up 5Ks in this one. He only had 8 in his first 3 starts. Very unaccustomed of him. This is what you usually see. This is priceless Carlos Rodon. <laughs> this is what the White Sox expect. They want him... They expect Quintana to be doing these types of things as well. And then, of course, you've got Miguel Gonzalez, a good free agent signing. James Shields in his last start struck out 10. And Lucas Giolito, the young prospect coming into himself. That's a solid rotation. Not right now, but down the road, I think the White Sox are going to be very competitive again. I could see this maybe by next year. They need a couple more pieces. They have some more prospects. They need some bullpen help. But I think they need one more big piece on this team. I think they definitely the piece they definitely need is an outfielder because Avicel Garcia, Charlie Tilson, and Peter Borges is not a pen World Series or even pennant winning outfielder. Outfield combo. So we're gonna We're gonna have to see what types of things they decide to do in the future. I could see them at the trade deadline trying to make a move. They have a lot of prospects. First pitch to Joe Maurer misses low ball one on the fastball. This one back up at 91. <clears throat> Maurer, like many others in that inning, had singles. Polanco, Maurer, Kenny's Vargas, and John Ryan Murphy all came up with one single base knocks. Narvez, one with the sign, 1-0 pitch. Mauer takes a nice looking backdoor slider on the outside part of the zone. One and one the count. <clears throat> he is one of two pure lefties along with Max Kepler that are opposing the left-handed Rodon today. One and one, here it comes. This one is fouled back one and two. Something we should take a look at. I don't think we're going to take a quick look in the bullpen. If any of these teams still have players warming up. For the White Sox, they have gotten Dan Jennings back up. They gave him a little rest. And then as for Minnesota, their bullpen is now there. So, it is now 1-2 and two, the count to Joe Maurer. After Maurer, it is Kenny's Vargas. The 1-2, the windup, the 1-2 offering. Maurer chases the curve, the dirt, nasty pitch, nasty breaker, sixth strikeout for Rodon, and that's the second out of this top of the fourth inning. And the game remains tied at two. 
Here's Kenny's Vargas, one for one on the day. He had us one of those singles. It was nice. They got, I mean, the top four didn't look too good in their time through the order. And then the fifth hitter gets a home run. They get hits from everyone, six through nine. That's a lineup that really produces if you got people hitting from top to bottom. First pitch here to Kenny's Vargas. He swings and misses at a fastball outside 0 1. 55 pitches now for Carlos Rodon. Here comes number 56, 0 1. Vargas fouls that one off to the left, 0-2 the count. As the White Sox will have Narvez and the two Cabreras, Melky and Everett, to face Barreos in the bottom of the fourth. 0-2. Vargas crushes one. Deep left center. Saying goodbye to that ball. Holy moly. Kenny Vargas just sent that way, way back into the bleachers. And just like that, it is the Twins leading the White Sox 3-2 as Kenny's Vargas goes deep. You could hear that off the bat. And that is about 10 rows into left center field. Near center, just a little bit left center here, guaranteed right field. And the White Sox fans frustrated after seeing that as Rondon surrenders the homer. And Kenny's Vargas gives the Twins a 3-2 lead. Tim Horton's Cup Series must be excited because his Minnesota Twins have now taken the advantage with John Ryan Murphy coming up next. He singled and, score, he singled and drove in Jorge Polanco back in the top of the second. First pitch to Murphy. Murphy takes a nice looking, moving fastball at 90 miles an hour. Oh, and won the cap. That wasn't straight heat because that's when Rondon gets hurt because he doesn't have a ton of velocity. That's got movement. Oh, one. Speaking of movement, the circle change in the outside part of the plate fools Murphy 0-2, and, and he looks for his seventh strikeout. Could he strike out the side? Narva's the sign. The 0-2 pitch. This one is grounded down to second. Anderson plays it on a hop, throws down to first, and got him, and that retires the side. But the Twins take the lead on a Kenny's Vargas moonshot. We head to the bottom of the fourth. 3-2, to two, the Twins lead on Monster Energy Saturday afternoon baseball. <clears throat> Omar Narvez walked his first plate appearance. Barrios facing him through three innings. He's thrown 53 pitches. He's given up four hits, two runs, three walks. There's also been an, a bad error by Max Kepler, yet he's in line for the win right now with a 3-2 to two advantage over a pitcher who struck out six. First pitch is outside ball one. We get the most exciting games, it seems like, here on Monster Energy Saturday Afternoon Baseball. As this is our third installment of it ever, we hope you've been enjoying all of ours. 1-0 is fouled off to the right, 1-1 one one the count. <clears throat> Reyes with the windup, the 1 1 pitch. Misses low, outside, change up, 2 and 1 the count. <clears throat> Here's the sign. The 2 1 pitch from Reyes is outside, 3 and 1 the count. Narvez can be excited, top of the order coming up next as he tries to draw his second walk of the afternoon. 3 1. Outside, ball 4. Narvez. Gets the base on balls for the second time today. And a leadoff base runner here in the fourth for Barreos to worry about with the top of the order, Melky Cabrera. Already starting the third time through the order here in the fourth. It's been a very interesting game, shall I say. That's a good word to use. Two flyouts today for Melky Cabrera. Dropping his average to 325. Still a great start for the veteran. Narvez, once again, not much speed. First pitch misses high, ball one. Last time it was the same situation, man on first and Narvez, nobody out. Cabrera couldn't move him over. Everett, though, dropped down a bunt and got him over to second. And once again, it looks like that'll be a similar situation. Pop-up, shallow center, Dozier comes out and makes the catch, and that's the first out. Nice play right there from Brian Dozier getting out there. Of course, the Twins, we never even, we didn't even mention this at all. The thing that looks very different for the Twins, you know Dozier had his 40 home runs. The other man 
who was in the 30s in home runs last year, 31, Trevor Plouffe, went to Oakland and is now the starting third baseman there and is only hitting 182 with two home runs in the first three weeks, which is definitely not what they wanted. But Trevor Plouffe no more because really on this team there's no space for him. Because they have so many guys who can play first base between Maurer and Kenny Vargas and John Ryan Murphy, Jason Castro, Robbie Grossman, Bienho Park in AAA. They have like six possible first basemen. And then you've got Dozier at second, Miguel Sano coming into himself at third, and of course the biggest prospect on the team, Jorge Polanco at short. It's really no space for Plouffe, and the outfield is pretty much set now with Buxton, Max Kepler, and then Robbie Grossman or Eddie Rosario. You've got four prime young outfielders. There's just no space for Plouffe. Everett takes that pitch, and it's low and inside, 1-0. 1-0 oh. pitch to the shortstop. He takes another one low and inside, 2-0. and oh. The move here from Everett Cabrera has really decreased Tim Anderson's importance on the team, moving him to second base. He's a good defensive shortstop, but Everest Cabrera probably much better when it comes to defense. 2-0 misses badly, 3-0, and one pitch away now from surrendering his fifth walk of the day is Boreas, who through 63 pitches has just thrown 29 strikes. If I do my math correctly, which I usually do, I think that's 34 balls. That's not good. Grounder, though, this could be two. Dozier flipped to Polanco, down to first. Everest Cabrera, the speedster, beats it out. So that is the second out, and then eliminates Narvez, but now it's a speedier man on the base paths than Everett Cabrera. With two outs and Jose Abreu. Nice defensive play, though, by Dozier to get the first, at least. Just need to keep eliminating base runners. A double, a walk, an RBI, and a run scored for Jose Abreu on the day. One for one. Cabrera stealing, throw down to second, he's out! Everett Cabrera thrown out trying to steal. That is not something you see all the time. It's the second time he's been caught all year. He's now 6 for 8 stealing. So Abreu will be back up in the 5th. As Everett Cabrera nailed down on the base paths. So no runs, no hits, nobody left. We head to the 5th inning. It's 3-2, to two, the Twins leading it. Right here on WUB Network. America's sports leader. Remember, next week, catch a new edition of Sports Speak. Lots of talk about sports, situations, highlights, game recaps, and more from all of this, your favorite sports. Basketball, baseball, football, hockey, NASCAR, and more. Don't miss Sports Speak with yours truly, Eddie Kalegi, right here on WUB Network. Top of the order up here for the Twins. Byron Buxton, Brian Dozier, and Robbie Grossman facing Rodon. First pitch from Carlos Rodon is grounded by Buxton down to short, bobbled by Everett Cabrera. He recovers, but it's not going to be in time. An error charge to Everett. Just now that's been a bad last two pitches. He's been thrown out trying to steal, and now he gets an error charge to him. And now a runner on first, a speedster in Byron Buxton with Brian Dozier coming to the plate. Ron, Rodon can't be too happy about that. Dozier, however, has struck out a pair of times today as Buxton getting a big lead off first, and they are going to throw back to first, but he dove in there before the throw even came. He extends his big lead once again. He's running. First pitch. Dozier takes it. Buxton running, and he's safe easily at second. Anderson does not put down the tag nearly quickly enough. And that is stolen base number three on the year for Byron Buxton, getting him into scoring position with nobody out here in the top of the fifth. <clears throat> that was a nice looking steal right there. And that's pretty much what you want from him. Great moves on the base paths from that man. So we get ready once again as they reset. A one pitch. Dozier lines one to center. Tilson makes the catch. Buxton tagging. He's heading to third. And he'll get there easily without a throw. And our runner at third and one out for Rodon to worry about with Robbie Grossman coming to the plate. 306 hitting right fielder will 
be who Rodon has to deal with. Narvez and him having some issues agreeing on the sides. They finally agree. First pitch is a slider in there. So at first it looked like Grossman didn't want to go with the slider. He eventually, he eventually gave in and it was a good idea as he gets the strike 0-1. 0-1 pitch to Grossman. Nice looking slider there. Top part of the zone broke down to the bottom inside part. And now he's ahead 0-2. Max Kepler's on deck. 0-2 to Robbie Grossman. Grossman lines went up the middle. That's a base hit. Buxton comes home. It's an RBI single for Robbie Grossman. And it's 4-2. The Twins lead it. Seventh hit of the day allowed by Carlos Rodon. That will be unearned, however, because of the error. Much like Jose Barrios only has one earned run allowed today. And now the Twins extend their lead. It is now 4-2. to two. Not exactly what they wanted. Dan Jennings has still been up and down in the White Sox pen. As Byron Buxton can celebrate. He's had some issues today. After first getting a home run robbed from him on the first at bat of the game by Avisel Garcia, then struck out with the bases loaded. Now he gets to celebrate crossing the plate. Here's Max Kepler, 185, still looking for his first blast of the year. No homers, just a pair of ribbies, just not really the start he was hoping for at all. First pitch to Kepler coming from Rodon. Kepler shoots one the right, and Borges makes the catch, and that will be the second out. Looking back the runner to first, and that is Robbie Grossman. So two away. Our first two Monster Energy Saturday afternoon baseball games. The final score is one nothing. With both of them, the scoring coming down to late in the eighth inning or later. Now we've already got four to two in the top of the fifth in this one. With both Barreos and Rodon, as we said, teammates for Team Venezuela off their game. Sano has gone deep today, looking to continue that success against Rodon whose pitch count is starting to become a possible issue. Now, with 67 fired off from the mound. Grossman on first. Two outs. First pitch to Mikel Sano. Rips one foul off to the left. Owen won the count. Mikel Sano has had a nice start to the day. One for two, but he does have that home run that gave the Twins their first run of the day and started the big run in the top of the second. Owen won. The pitch comes. Sano rips one to right. That might be over the head of Borges. No, he gets there, covers some ground, and makes the play. And that will retire the side. So no runs, a hit, an error, one left. We head to the bottom of the fifth. We're more than halfway through. Twins and White Sox, 4-2. to two. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth, and then it'll be time for Matt Swayze's mid-game report. We'll be back. <laughs> Jose Abreu was up in the bottom of the fifth. To start off that inning. But when Everett Cabrera was thrown out trying to steal, that ended that. 66th pitch for Boreos is his 35th strike. Pardon me, 35th ball, 1 0 on the two seam fastball that misses low in the dirt. Hard of the order to worry about with Abreu, Frazier, and Charlie Tilson. <laughs> Some of the strongest in the White Sox lineup. 1-0 to Abreu. He takes another one inside, 2-0. Barreos, it has not been pretty, but if he just finishes out this inning, he has a chance at victory. Four innings, four hits, two runs, just one earned, four walks, and he has not struck anybody out today. While Rodon has six strikeouts, but Rodon has also allowed seven hits, three earned runs, and a pair of long blasts to Mikel Sano and Kenny Vargas, both being their second bombs of the year. We'll go more in depth of that before the top of the sixth one. It'll be time for Matt Swayze's mid-game report. 2-0 Barreos behind on Jose Abreu. Abreu fans and misses at the two-seamer. 2-1. Two he was swinging for the fences right there. He wanted to get the White Sox their first long blast of the day. <clears throat> the sign from John Ryan Murphy. 2-1 from Barreos, swing and a miss, Abreu on top of that fastball, just missed fouling it off, but anyway, would have had the same count, it's even 2-2. Two two. 
pitch number 70 coming up for Jose Barrios as we take a quick look in the White Sox pen because Dan Jennings is no longer warming up. He'd been warming up for a while. As we check what's going on there, they do have an arm up. I believe it's Matt Perk, who has had a solid, who is, has solid innings and solid um, strength. He's not one of the guys that's been used up recently, yet he has had a struggling year. Anyway, Barreos, 2-2 two and two on Abra Jose Abreu. The pitch. Abreu fouls it off to the left, fighting hard here against Jose Barreos. Count is even 2-2. Two 2-2 and 2-2 two. Two, two pitch. This one is grounded up the middle. Polanco grabs it with the glove, picks it up, throws to first, got him. Jose Abreu is retired for the first out of the fifth inning. The bottom of the fifth. And now it is time for the Todd Father. <clears throat> As it will be Todd, the Todd, Fry, Todd Frazier, 250 hitter. So far, and this one is 0 for 2. Looking for his first hit of the day off Boreos. First pitch. Todd lifts one. Deep center field. Going back near the wall and making the catch. Making slight contact with the walls. Kepler, and that's the first out. Pardon me, the second out. Nice play by Kepler to rob Todd of extra bases. Nice leaping catch, and that'll bring up Charlie Tilson, who has a single and a triple to his credit, raising his season average to 313. He's got a dusty uniform from defensive and offensive plays. And now he's going to rip another one into left. That's a base hit. Tilson stops at first wisely, but a two-out single. Third hit of the day for the rookie. Charlie Tilson. You may not know him that well playing for the White Sox. Remember that name. I assure you. Here's Avisel Garcia. Usually a good hitter with two outs. Has a walk and a fly out to his credit today. And today Garcia and here Garcia rips one up the middle. That's a base hit. Tilson thinks about hitting the third. He thinks wisely of it. But the throw was offline. I think he would have made it. A back-to-back -back singles ripped by Tilson and Garcia. And now there's two on and two out for Tim Anderson. So things falling apart at the seams for Jose Barreos, who's now at 74 pitches. And the Twins do have action now in that bullpen. And it's Adalberto Mejia warming up again. The pitch coming to Tim Anderson. Anderson crushes one! Deep left field! Way back! Say goodbye to that ball! Holy moly! Tim Anderson just crushed that one! You weren't watching it because you can't really see it. That fastball was horrible from Barreos. It lands in the bullpen and bounces about five rows. That one was so high, hung up in the air for so long. A humongous blast from Tim Anderson, and the White Sox lead it five to four. You can hear the fireworks going off. What a turn in momentum. Jose Barreos can't believe it. The Twins can't believe it. The White Sox lead it 5-4. to four. You can hear the fans at Guaranteed Rate Field excited. Anderson high-fives Garcia and Tilson and heads back and Peter Borges will come to the plate. What a shift in momentum. Two outs and then three pitches. A single, a single, and a home run. Now Peter Borges has grounded out and flown out today. So three homers in this one. We had not seen a homer yet on Monster Energy Saturday afternoon baseball. And now Borges grounds went up the middle past the diving Polanco. Four pitches, four hits. And Barreos is just absolutely falling to pieces. Oh, no. And those have all been earned runs. And he had a chance to finish out this inning, just get one more out, and he'd be in line for the victory. Now Carlos Rodon's all of a sudden in line for the victory. And that'll bring up Narvez, who's drawn a pair of walks. And with the way Barreos has been pitching, he'll be careful with what he swings at. First pitch, throws a fastball in there, strike one. Barreos has control. He's getting the pitches in the strike zone, but they just have no movement. Oh, one, Narvez pops one up. 
Second base shortstop, who's going to get it? Coming in from right field and making the play is Robbie Grossman, and that will retire the side. So we'll head to the top of the sixth, but first we'll have the game or the mid-game report from Matt Swayze. The White Sox shift the momentum with three here in the bottom of the fifth inning on a three-run monsoon of a blast from Tim Anderson. The White Sox lead it five to four. We'll be back. We thank everyone for sticking with us right here on Monster Energy Saturday Afternoon Baseball. The Twins and White Sox in an AL Central battle. We send it to Matt Swayze for the mid-game report. Thanks, Eddie. It's this AL Central battle, and this is a different Monster Energy Saturday Afternoon Baseball game than we've seen the first two weeks, mainly because there's been a lot of scoring in the early part. Both of the games we've seen so far were one nothing finishes. Today, both Carlos Brodon and Jose Barrios have not been their best each giving up some long shots. Carlos Rodon has served up a couple homers to Mike Hilsino and Kenny's Vargas. Also, a bad play by Max Kepler defensively allowed the White Sox to score a run back in the first inning. Pardon me, the Twins, the White Sox to score in the first inning. And then the trouble continued for Jose Barreos in the fifth inning. He had gotten back under control. He gave up two in the first, and then things got bad for Barreos as he ended up giving up a three-run shot in the last inning to Tim Anderson, making this a 5-4 to four Chicago lead, and now putting Carlos Rodon, who's had a pretty bad day. He's allowed seven hits, four runs, three earned, six strikeouts, two homers. He's in line for the win. Back to Eddie. Thanks a lot, Matt Swayze is the top of the sixth about to get underway. Jorge Polanco, Joe Matt and Kenny's Vargas will be batting the 6-7-8 hitters. Rodon looks in for the sign from Narvez. Pitch number 70 on the day for Rodon as we start the 6th. Is grounded by Polanco softly down to 3rd. Todd Frazier picks it up, throws on a hop, and got him, and that's the first out. Twins start to need to start racking up some runs if they want to have a chance to get this lead back because the Twins' bullpen is not something you really get excited about. Every night, usually, it seems like one of their pitchers gives up a lot of runs. Craig Breslow has done horrible. Buddy Boschers has not been his best. Kyle Gibson, who was a big prospect last year, looks absolutely terrible this year. And now Joe Maurer bats. Joe Maurer, one for two, also a strikeout on the day for Joe. Narvez with the sign. Rodon agrees. First pitch of the at-bat to Joe is grounded foul back to the backstop. Owen won the count. 0-1, here comes the pitch to Maurer. Curveball, tries to backdoor that pitch, it's inside. Ball one, count is even, one and one the count. 1-1, one, one, Rodon deals. Maurer drives one to right field, he socks it, but high in the air and an easy play in right field for Peter Borges, and that's the second out of the sixth inning. Nice play there from Borges. That looked much better off the bat when Maurer hit that, but it ended up hanging up there. The wind is kind of shifting and is going another way, and now out comes Robin Ventura. It looks like a pitching change is coming. We'll be back. Well, an interesting decision with Kenny's Fargus, who's hit a homer today as a righty, the White Sox elect to go with a left-handed pitcher, Matt Perk which has its risks, especially being that he's a lefty facing a righty. I don't really understand that, but then again, Carlos Rodon was a lefty as well, so... I don't know. Rodon finishes off five and two-thirds, seven hits, four runs, three earns, six strikeouts, and a pair of home runs allowed. One of them to Kenny's Vargas, who's batting here. Vargas two for two on the day. Nice game so far with a home run and a single. Average up to 236. It was at just 194 at the start of the game. He does not play every day. As Perk looks in for the sign from Narvez, first pitch, Vargas taken all the way on the sinker from Matt Perk. Owen won the count. After this at bat, we'll get into Perk's stats. They really have not been pretty for one of the main lefties on this team. 0-1 is up and away. One won the count on the fastball. Narvez with the sign. Perk with the 1-1 offering, paints the outside part of the zone, 1-2 and two the count on the sinker.
Crowd on their feet. They want to get out of the sixth. One, two pitch. In there, strike three in the bottom part of the zone. Kenny Vargas does not agree. Perk gets the strikeout of Kenny Vargas. Looks very low, but he gets the call from the home plate umpire. And we'll head to the bottom of the sixth. 5-4, the White Sox still lead. So we're going to talk about Matt Perk quickly. He has an ERA of 9 on the year. So far, 6 and 2 thirds innings pitched. He's get, he has a pair of losses to his credit. Has struck out 7, walked 4, and has allowed 7 earned runs in 7 innings right now. He's allowed 9 hits, a couple bombs. Strikeout to walk ratio is not even 2 to 1. That's not what you want. Top of the order. Now for the fourth time for the White Sox here in the sixth inning. Starting with Melky Cabrera. Not a good day for him so far. The man who leads the team in average is just 0 for 3. All three of them being flyouts. One to left, one to center, one to right. New pitcher in for the Twins. First pitch is grounded up the middle to second base. Dozier grabs it by second base and fires to first for the first out. That is Craig Breslow in. And speaking of struggles... Craig Breslow has an ERA of 11.05 as a lefty, is 0-2 this season with seven innings pitched, and has allowed 10 earned runs. 10 runs, 9 earned, with three home runs in there as well. 11 hits, a couple walks, and strikeouts, but not that many. And he has a blown save this year as well. He got revoked from the closing role, and they moved Glenn Perkins back there. Perkins had a horrible spring training. And they decided to start the year with Breslow, and then they decided better of it. As one Cabrera retired by Breslow, now he's got to deal with another one. It's uh, Everett Cabrera, who's having a nice day. One for two with a double. And also, we should just tell you that Jose Barrios, he finishes five innings, eight hits, five earned. No, five runs, four earned. Four walks, no strikeouts in the one home run, and he's in line for the loss. Carlos Rodon currently in line for the win. If this result stayed up, Rodon would get to 2-0 on the year. Barrios would fall to 0-2. As we said, here comes the shortstop, Everett Cabrera, who is really establishing himself as the season goes on, as the man they should keep at the shortstop position, hitting 556 over his past five games. But not a good look there. Swing and a miss and a nice movement on the fastball from Breslow. Owen won the count. Breslow sets the 0-1 offering. Swing and a miss. Cabrera behind on that fastball as well. One at 92. This one at 93. Breslow with a little more behind that one. Owen to the count to Everest Cabrera. The sign from John Ryan Murphy, the 0-2 pitch. Cabrera reaches out for that one, but just fouls it back. Going back is Murphy, but that's going to be behind the screen. Count remains 0-2. 0-2 pitch to Everett. Takes one down the middle, strike three and another fastball. Cabrera looks out of sorts in that, at that, and Craig Breslow quickly has two outs, but it doesn't get any easier now with Jose Abreu to worry about. Abreu early in the game, doubled into the right center field gap. And a very nice looking plate appearance, and he ended up driving in a run there. He also has a run scored. He drives, scored the second run of the first inning on that error by Max Kepler. First pitch to Abreu, takes one upstairs. Good eye by Abreu, and two-seamer, one and the count. Breslow looks in from the side, the 1-0 pitch. Abreu lines on the left, coming in and making the nice running catch as Byron Buxton that retires the side. So Breslow actually with a solid inning and gets through the heart of the White Sox order. We'll head to the seventh. White Sox still leading 5-4 on Monster Energy Saturday afternoon baseball. Here's John Ryan Murphy, 1-2 for two with a ground out and a ribby. Hitting 100 on the year as Perk. First pitch, Murphy attacks it, flies it to shallow right. Coming in is Borges, he'll make the play, and that's the first out. Nice pitching there from Matt Perk. They'll probably go Perk for the rest of the seventh, and then turn it to Nate Jones for the eighth, and then their closer, David Robertson, to try to close out the Twins. 
Byron Buxton back to the plate. This might be his last plate appearance of the day. He has a stolen base. He's reached on an error and scored 0 for 3, though, on the day. And that was his big swing, big hack on the fastball, but it was a little too up and in for Buxton to make any sort of contact 0 and 1. Byron Buxton has an amazing amount of pine tar on the bat that we've noticed all game and we've noticed this season. It's still below the legal limit. It's been asked before. 0-2 pitch to Buxton. He drives one to center. Coming in is Garcia, and he makes the catch. No, pardon me, Charlie Tilson, and that's the second out. So back to you, the pine tar. Buxton's, Buxton and his manager have both said that it is completely legal, that he just likes to feel the bat better that way. And as long as it's legal, it's working. He does have a 290 average in the season which was before this game up in the 300s still, and he has seven ribbies, he has six doubles, a triple. Not hitting for power, he did a little bit last season, but he has gotten rid of some of the power and, and in turn has gained some better contact and plate discipline. Brian Dozier also liked Buxton to struggle today. A pair of strikeouts and a flyout 0 for 3. Perk's first pitch is fouled back 0-1. Usually Perk is wild and can't find the strike zone. Eight of his first nine have been strikes. That one contradicts what I just said, is that slider had to be corralled by Narvez in the dirt, one and one. Twins will have to deal with Frazier Tilson and Avicel Garcia in the eighth, so it doesn't get any easier for Minnesota. One one line by Dozier, just fouled down the right field line. Abreu even went for a dive because he thought that ball might stay in play, but he wouldn't have gotten to it anyway. One, two, nasty curve in the dirt. Down goes Dozier. Swing and a miss at that nasty breaker as Perk gets him one, two, three. Stretch time from Chicago, five to four, the White Sox lead. Welcome back. Todd Frazier, Charlie Tilson, and Avicel Garcia are up. You know, for the NASCAR Progressive Cup Series, you can now vote for who you think deserves to be in the All-Star Race. Voting's open until May 15th, as we'll be taking about 15 drivers, it looks like, into the All-Star Race. So be sure to make your prediction, and you'll see, and vote, and see who you think deserves it most. Right now, Kyle Larson is leading the voting with 10 votes. Jimmy Johnson, Chase Elliott's 8 apiece. Dale Jr. and Matt Kenseth. Brad Keselowski, Joey Logano at five and six apiece. Here's Todd Frazier. A lot of the big guns have struggled today. Frazier in that category as well, 0 for 3. And he swings and misses at a Breslow fastball strike one. Breslow in for his second inning of work. He still has a double-digit ERA. If he gets one more out right here, he'll get it under that. Russell has just had a horrible first three weeks of the year. 0-1 swing and a miss by Frazier. He was swinging for the fences there, but a circle change is not the pitch you want when you take that time to hack. 0-2 the count. 0-2. Murphy sets up outside. Russell hits that spot a little too far outside for the strike call. 1-2 the count. 1-2 pitch. Swing and a miss by Frazier. Blown away by that fastball, and Breslow retires him. How about Craig Breslow? So far, as after four batters, he's struck out a pair and has looked really good out there. And now he'll face Charlie Tilson, a fellow lefty. He had to deal with three switch hitters. Now he gets rid of the righty. Now he's got to worry about the lefty in Charlie Tilson, whose batting average is up to 323. It's been a big year for Charlie. Not only a big year, also a big game. Three for three, a triple and a run score. First pitch to Tilson. Taking outside all the way. Breslow, not the best looking circle change right there. One and another count. Breslow looks in the 1 0 pitch. Swing and a miss. Nasty break of the two seamer. One and one the count. Murphy with the sign, the 1-1 pitch. Tilson reaches down for it, and he ends up fouling it off to the left behind the tarp, 1-2. and two. Can Breslow rack up another K? He does! Nasty break on the curve. Tilson goes down swinging. And pardon me, that was the slider at 85. Three of the five batters he's faced have gone down swinging, and now Charlie Tilson, who was 3-for-3 three three with a triple before that, finally 
does, is not batting a thousand for the day. So he'll go take a seat and into the batter's box steps in Avicel Garcia. As Bressel looks to continue his success here, bottom of the seventh, White Sox leading at home at guaranteed rate right field on a Saturday night, 5-4. to four. First pitch, Breslow swearing a miss by Garcia on the heater on the outside part of the plate, 0-1. Breslow doesn't blow you away. He's in the low 90s, but he is making it look good here, 0-1. Garcia lines one down to third. Sano makes a play on it, but it's ruled foul, 0-2. 0-2 pitch. Inside, ball one. Breslow looking to strike out the side. The one-two pitch. That was the pitch he got the other two to bite on. That's a two-seamer in the dirt, but not chasing there is Garcia with a lot more play, plate discipline than the first two. Two and two the count. Two and two. It looks like Murphy's calling for the heat. That's what he does, but just misses inside on the fastball. That one only at 90, not his best. Count is full. On deck is Tim Anderson. 3-2 pitch. Grounded down the third and foul once again, says Jim Tom Payne, and will reset once again. Frazier down on K's. Charlie Tilson down on K's. 3-2 pitch. Grounded down to third. Sano grabs it. Fires down to first and got him. Craig Breslow, six up, six down. That's keeping the White Sox from tallying up their lead. We head to the eighth. Five to four, the White Sox lead. We'll be back. 